Oh, Lucy's match playing. Uh, I don't know. I actually don't know what the reasoning behind it is. Okay. But yeah, I think they just wanted to play it. So. Hey, I'm here for it. This could. This has the potential to be a very good match. I think it's mostly related to laugh my ass off random seating. Hold that. <laughs> this is definitely <laughs> yeah. like the result of the nightmare that is like random seating is cool for an Arcadian because if you want to be super technical, if you're participating within an Arcadian. Yeah. There's no true justification for how you should be seated. Yeah, it's like one of those things like you can't have it both ways where you can enter one but then expect to be seated. Like, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, hold that. But on the other side of that, these are both players who, at least part of the, the NYC and LI communities, are very familiar with their abilities and their like, larger than life play styles. Yeah, and I feel like it's kind of interesting that, like, so I didn't really play Smash 4 at all. I, I was new to this kind of community in Ultimate. And it was pretty interesting because uh, as soon as I went to a tournament, I kind of immediately knew that like MGW was like someone. Like he definitely has kind of like this this aura of like being like someone that people know, someone that people watch out for in bracket, and someone that people really know. And another interesting thing about MGW is just that if you watch the player cam, he really gets into it while he plays. He really like you can see that when he gets a hit, like he really feels it uh, and really starts like moving with the game in a way that I think is really fun to watch. And it's great to see how much enthusiasm he really has for the game in that sense. Oh, He's definitely a man of the community, and most certainly someone who plugs himself into the Matrix with each set. He puts his all into it, and although not as a motive, you could say the same for Mojo. He's one of the uh, one of the shining stars of Long Island who has just been waiting for that one moment to pop. And I feel like the same can almost be said for MGW, where even though he is very well known, even outside of the Tri-State community, it's it's his results that don't showcase his talents sometimes. Yeah. And I feel like this is the type of bracket that could really do that. But in this kind of a situation where you have two players facing each other so early, I don't know, man. One of these guys can't go further into the bracket, but nonetheless, we're going to have a good-ass match ahead of us. Yeah, and I know that the, the main Arcadian was also, like, about a month ago for this season, and there were a lot of matchups really early on in losers that you wouldn't expect. I think that actually, like, the top five seeds, none of them made top eight except for one. <laughs> so it's actually really fast. I was actually one of them. It was embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> so it was, uh, it was really interesting to see, and I think that Arcadians, it's really interesting... Uh, they're really interesting tournaments because people really kind of go in with different expectations of how they can do uh, and different like levels of, of really being into it where someone might kind of phone it in on a weekly if they're going up against someone who's like the one seed who they feel like they don't really have a chance against. But I think that in Arcadian, people don't really feel that way. People feel like they really have a chance. So you see these kind of upsets where someone might beat MGW early or might beat Mr. Mojo Rising really early and you end up with these really fascinating high stakes matches even as early as losers round two. Turning our focus to the action for a little bit, seeing how MGW's been doing a very good job of staying super mobile, playing a lot of that classic hit and run that we come to expect from Greninja. And more importantly to that, I feel like he's doing a really good job of being aware of the space on Battlefield that is allotted to him. Like Mojo is tr trying to chase very well and he's not committing to buttons as hard, but Whenever MGW's putting out a hitbox, he's making sure to retreat with it or just be smart about being able to trade. Yeah, I mean, you definitely, what I think is kind of interesting is that he's had the lead for the whole match, but I think that a lot of people, when they get the lead, they kind of use that as justification to play more aggressively or use space more aggressively or really try and, like, push their opponent further to try and, like, close out the game. And that's not really what we're seeing from MGW at all. We're really seeing him kind of back up, sort of get Mojo Ryzen uncomfortable, get him to sort of make the first move. And then you can see that, like, even if they're in neutral and they have like even stage control he's willing to just throw a couple small shurikens to try and get mojo to really commit which i think is very interesting but we're seeing kind of a change in that play style right now i think yeah the uh, fact that this match is managing to even itself up a bit is showing that like mojo's caught on to how mgw is oh, able to zone damn. him out but hydro pump managing to win box him out is going to give mgw game one although like you're pointing out things are getting a little slippery towards the end there and Yo, the boys popping off for MGW already. Yeah. Definitely a fan favorite, so to speak. Uh, uh, kind of an effect of him being such a long-standing community member. A lot of people really like MGW, really want to see him win. Uh, Mr. Mojo Ryzen certainly is fans of his own, though. Most definitely. And even though we can't quite see it in the player camera, off in the distance, there he is. It's Long Island's own star child. It's player four. Trying to root on Mojo. You know, not too much of Long Island turned out tonight. Oh, there he goes. Well, not too <laughs> much of Long Island turned out tonight. Uh, we kind of had like scattered crowds, but 
The ones who did show up, I feel like, could leave a dent in the bracket. Yeah, no, I, I agree. There have definitely been some some really kind of dangerous looking faces in the bracket as far as the people who made the trip down. And we can't really blame people for not making the trip down, because especially like around the holiday season, the traffic is just unbelievable. Oh, the LIRR is kind man. of a mess. <laughs> I mean, like, what can you do? Oh, bro, you're preaching to the choir. I really appreciate someone who's willing to take someone back to a stage that they lost on. I think that that shows a lot of strength and confidence in a player. And I feel like it's like it's a good pick for Mojo because you don't want to give a more laterally oriented space to uh, to Greninja. Otherwise, he's gonna make his superior ground speed like really start to weigh down on Lucina. But yeah. also, in game one, we really didn't see Mojo lose out because of the stage. It was just smart decisions from MGW where he was able to turn very quick reversals and just stay a couple of steps ahead of Mojo in his chase or keep himself a far enough ahead in the percentage race where. It really was just a matter of the play skill. Definitely. And I think that this round, even though MGW won the previous game, he's still very much changing up his play style in the sense that you see him doing a lot more things on Mojo Ryzen's shield, trying to get him to sort of do those panic options. Like the up B that you saw early in the game, he managed to, to cross Mojo up and really uh, just get him to overcommit. And I think that you're seeing a lot more of those interactions uh, here where Mo uh, MGW is being a little more aggressive and trying to play the game at a much closer range. And it seems like Mojo is ready for that and is adapting to that very, very confidently. You can see they spacing out with down tilt and F tilt. And yeah, like this sort of more aggressive style hasn't yet really paid dividends for MGW the way that his style in game one, which is much more defensive, did. Now, one of the aspects of Mojo's play that's very well known amongst the Long Island players is how quickly he can adapt and how he's not afraid to start pressing buttons once it starts working. Like, a very dangerous combo to be sure because you never want to deal with a Lucina who's not afraid to start swinging, but a Lucina who knows when to make that call to start swinging can be dangerous against any character in the cast and really any play style in Ultimate. Yeah, no, it's really true. Lucina is... I, I think Lucina kind of gets a bad rep among a lot of people because she doesn't really have the very complex punish game that certain other characters do. And I think that people really take that to be like, oh, this character doesn't really have a lot going on. She's fundamentally very good, but there's not a lot of variation in how you play Lucina. But I actually think that that's not very true in that, like, she has a very simple toolkit and she has a very simple punish game, but the way that you use those tools can vary so heavily. And the way that Mojo played game one and the way that he played game two is so different, even though he's using those same very simple tools. He's just applying them in different ways and adapting those that use of those tools to MGW's new style in a way that's amazing to see so rapidly. Ooh, MGW wanted to go for it all yeah. there, try and net the early kill, secure this 2-0 over Mojo, but it's not in the cards just yet. Mojo's starting to bleed out, but 142 on Greninja is pretty dangerous numbers to be showcasing. I don't know Greninja percents well, but I'd imagine that he needs like 10% more before he can really start going for like dash attack up smash to seal it out, I'd imagine. Yeah, that the percentages that are on board right now, like going for the shadow sneak just to either threaten kill or guarantee stage control, I feel is pretty smart, but oh, retreating the there. Take it. Yeah. Oh, all right. Crowd's starting to get a bit rowdy there. A smile out of player four. All right. We got a match. We really got a match. It's curi I'm I curious to see that. where MGW goes with this uh, in terms of stage. Now, if if he's to channel uh, any of the other New Yorker ninjas, I feel like he's going to want to try and bring it to the town and city. Yeah, and I mean, that's the kind of thing where you have like the holy trinity of FD, Kalos, and town and city, where like if you ban two, your opponent's going to go to the other one, and that's exactly what we saw, right? We saw FD and Kalos ban, and he's heading to town and city. Oh, yeah. Everyone everyone knows to take FD away from Greninja's. That's, you don't want that smoke at yeah, all. No, it makes sense. Really makes sense. And Kalos, I think, is just a difficult stage for Lucino to really navigate in general, uh, both in terms of the platform being very close to the ledge in terms of, of obviously they're right above there, uh, and, and just in terms of also killing. Uh, Lucina does a lot of killing off the sides, and while I think Town and City obviously favors Greninja, Lucina will really get a lot out of those blast zones. I think the dimensions of the blast zones where they're very high, but not very wide, actually favors uh, Lucina very well. I would agree, and I feel like Lucina fares well with covering the plats and when it is in its FD uh, formation. So as far as grounds to cover, this is probably the most even that Lucina can ask for on Greninja's counterpick. But 
Playstyle wise is where it's really going to come down to. We've seen how well Mojo can adapt. Let's see if MGW can keep up the pace. Yeah, and the question really is, especially when you see a set where the first two games are played on Battlefield and then you go to one of the more flat stages, the question is, to what extent was Mojo's ability to land in the previous two games more of a factor of the platforms on Battlefield or more of a factor of his mix-ups while landing? And you already saw that he kind of struggled to get down early in the game. MGW picked up a lot of percent. So we'll have to see what he does to adapt to how much more space MGW has to really put pressure on Mojo as he's landing. I feel like the fact that Mojo is a lot more comfortable with pressing his buttons and understanding his spacing against Greninja is what's allowing him to play towards MGW as he's starting to adapt. Because now we see MGW trying to pick a very particular space when he starts throwing out these shurikens, when he starts threatening with forward air. He's trying to be right outside of Falchion range, that way he doesn't have to worry about fair and bear repositioning Mojo. But Mojo swinging away, he manages to break first blood in game three, and he's really just been keeping it with Greninja's own speed and picking where MGW has to battle him. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And and we'll see, like, here you can really see that he wasn't sort of going for the immediate uh, ledge trap option where you try and punish immediate with immediately what they do, but instead really uh, Mojo is trying to establish himself on the stage, make sure that MGW is unable to regain center unless he really gets past it in some way. And that's a great fastball air dodge to get out of that situation. Uh, Ooh, all right, yeah, we see some heavy swings going on there. As soon as uh, MGW tried to get a landing, like, and Mojo made, almost made him pay the price at as early as 90%. Oh my god, and up three stocks to one, and the headphones coming off for oh. MGW, which is always a really interesting sign. I really like when players adjust those sorts of things mid-set. Uh, He's yeah. got to feel the crowd, man. I, listen, there's no crowd like a New York crowd when it comes to Smash. That's so. true. We but are loud as hell. <laughs> riding that energy can either break someone or really build them up. And it seems to really be working for MGW so far. I love how he jumps up and he just waits for the air dodge. Like, the run outside of Lucina range and then dash attack, I think is a phenomenal adaptation because you just go for the whiff punishes, which is one of Greninja's greatest strengths as a character, especially, like given how aggressive Mojo's been playing now. Yeah, no, for sure. And Mojo, you can see, anxious to finish this game, but it's not going to be so easy. He has a 67% lead, which is fantastic, but he really has to seal out this stock quickly, because as we've seen, once MGW has him in disadvantage, he racks up damage incredibly quickly. Like, even with the given percentage deficit, if MGW manages to get one offstage <gasps> attraction, it could have been his, but instead, it's going to be Mojo taking it in a 2-1. Fist bumps go, and that's the end of the road for MGW today. Yeah, an amazing set, but really a heartbreaker that one of these players had to be playing, uh, that they really had to be playing against each other in losers so early, because surely 